Well, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Paul Stisser, and I'm a business development, e-learning, mobility manager at ReadSpeaker. I always like to start off my presentations with just a little sample of what ReadSpeaker can do. This is an example of our technology within the campus, uh, excuse me, the Canvas platform. Welcome to our Read Speaker session at InstructureCon. Andreas Person, local, June 18th at 3.09 p.m. BR course, June 18th at 7.09 a.m. No one read replies. No one read replies. No replies. So what you're seeing there is, is an example of the different things that it's reading here. So one of our examples is also the highlighting functionality. No replies. My name is Paul Stisser and I will be your presenter today on Read Speaker, Enhancing the Learning Experience, the Future of Education. Today we will be discussing TTS, TTS role in education and Read Speaker's integration within Canvas. I look forward to your feedback. Paul. Unread. Collapse replies. So you can see an example of our technology as we go along. So today what we're really here to do is to talk about the role of TTS. Um, the engagement that is doing in enhancing the learning experience of today's learner. Our agenda is really to also to introduce Read Speaker, um, our role that it is in education today, talk a little bit of, more about our technology and how it's being used on your campus today. One way or another, I have to believe that our solution is being utilized with one of our publishers that we're working with, or one of the campus website, or excuse me, one of the websites your students are accessing. Our solution is, is one of those things that enhances the learning experience by bridging the ability to convert your audio, your, excuse me, your digital content into audio at any time and anywhere on the fly. When we often talk about Read Speaker, people always like to categorize as kind of that assistive technology as that solution that is designed more for the disability service office. Yeah, we are there to support that and enhance that learning experience but also it's a little bit more. It's really to, quote unquote, fit into the universal design of learning principles. The ability to provide content in an alternative way or a multiple means of representation. And also the ability for that student to engage in that content elsewhere. We know today's learners are accessing content on multiple devices in today's BYOD environment. We know they're using desktops, laptops, mobile phones, iPads. They're looking for this information everywhere that they can. ReadSpeaker is a SaaS, so there's nothing to download on, our, um, on the student's end, user end. All they have to do is press the button, and dynamically, that content is converted into audio. What well, really helps cater to the different learning styles out there. Today's learners, as, excuse me, let me back it up a little. As more and more students get access to higher ed, K-12, we're seeing that we're getting all different styles of learners. Um, we have a generation of, book on, of books on tape learners, people who are mobile learners, multitaskers. But we also have you know, a, a population out there that is um, roughly, I've seen all different numbers, anywhere from 20% to 30% that are classified as learning different, learning disabled, and also um, have dyslexia. ReSpeaker is ideal to fit into their learning style in those areas. And as these learners get more access to higher education and also to more advanced courses in, in um, the K-12 marketplace, we're, we're really looking at ways to level that playing field. And that's one of the tools that Read Speaker really does. Workings of text-to-speech. Well, they always like to say, hey, where are some of the studies that back it up? You know, the role of text-to-speech, the role of, you know, of what Read Speaker is providing. And, and I always like to source two um, big studies that are out there. One by the Journal of, of LD on bimodal learning. Let me enlarge that a little bit if I can. Right now, oh, let me back it up. Um, and it really discusses the bimodal learner. We know that the students are looking to access information um, in an alternative way besides just the text. You know, we, we got to see the keynote today and they're talking about students being able to access information. Um, and just a little bit more background uh, um, on, on, on my history. 
You know, I spent 14 years of teaching in Rochester, New York, working with students who are learning disabled. I have an um, extensive background of working and trying to make learning a little bit more fun and engaging students to kind of level that playing field. And when I came across Read Speaker, I said, whoa, this is, this is an, a unique tool that really um, is ideal for um, online learning. And that's one of the things that we really talked about um, you know, in my early discussions with Read Speaker, and I love the way that it supports that. The other one that really hit home uh, as, as an educator, centered around the Missouri system, or the AT study on DTS, ways that it improved the students' outcomes. Well, you can go down there, hey, it increased, you know, the graduation rate. There's all different numbers in here. The one as an educator that I love the most is the second one to the bottom that highlights 95% decreased reliance on human assistance. It leveled the playing field. It made them more independent learners. The ability to listen to content in that UDL alternative way met to their learning strategy, their learning comfort level, to where, or excuse me, their learning style, and it really advanced their ability to compete in the classroom. Before I go on, a um, couple more slides about ReadSpeaker. I wanted to take, if there were any questions on, on those slides. <sighs> I, I think that is a great question, and I think I'll answer it in this, in this slide right here. Okay? So just really centered around the studies and, and the reports on that. Um, and, and I'll get into really the background of, of ReadSpeaker and our functionality and the multiple languages. And if there aren't any other questions, I, I'll jump right into that. Okay. Well, we're the world's leader in online text-to-speech. We're the first ones to ever first pioneer speech-enabling application for online. We're on over 5,000 websites globally. Some of my favorites are the World Digital Library, which is part of um, the um, Library of Congress. Um, WebMD is a very popular one. NIH. Um, I could go on for a long, a long, long way centered around some of those. Also, we support 35 plus languages. Um, and we offer 100 different voices. So yes, we do have a UK English. We have an Aussie English. We have a, an American English. And then we are U.S. English, and then of course we have, you know, male and female voices to choose from. And those are all different things that can be evaluated within the Canvas environment as as you look to offer, as you look to review it. Where are we in 2014? We're really a global company. Um, you know, we're based. You know, our our um, U.S. headquarters is in Virginia. Our corporate headquarters is in the Netherlands, and our tech. Headquarters is in Sweden. So we're really all over the place. Um, my home office isn't that far south in Florida, but it's, um, um, it, it, it is in Florida. So it also represents some of our employees and where we're located. Some of our client list, just give you a quick view of it. These are the, the solutions. And that's why I always say, hey, um, we're somewhere on your campus, somewhere being utilized. And this is just a snapshot of it. Well, we know that there's the importance of TTS. Um, but then also, where, besides me just saying that, you know, where's the proof behind that? And that's one of the things that, on um, text-to-speech. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we've seen is, um, some of our early engagements in e-learning and in the education space has been in, in publishing. So we're kind of where we are in the educational ecosystem. Gives you an example of some of the LMSs, some of the um, authoring tools like Soft Chalk, um, some of the educational institutions that are using us for their websites to enhance, um, and then also some of the other um, key players. Assessments being used by Discovery, McGraw-Hill, and then, of course, if you look at the periodicals, um, EBSCO, Gale, um, the MindCap platform, 
Um, those are all being used, that are all utilizing ReadSpeaker. Maybe white label, you may think it's an EBSCO solution, but when you press that button, it's ReadSpeaker that they're using. This is just to carry over on that. To, carry, to, to relate back to that one slide that I was talking about, well, that's great that you're saying that, Paul, but where's the usage? Well, when you look at over our you know, 5,000 clients, our top 10 are all in, well, I shouldn't say that. A majority of them are in the U.S. market centered around education and also publishing. So if you look at the, the activations and where they're at, um, McGraw Hill at over 30 million, and I believe that they will be hitting close to that 100 million mark of activations this year, uh, just because it's been um, further um, rolled out. Um, also, if you look at some of the other publishers, you know, centered around seven, five, three million. So that's quite a bit of activations. And that's content that's being dynamically generated, pushing out and pushing back. And I think I might have just, these are some of the publishers. I think I kind of jumped a little ahead on that slide. So really, how does it work? There's no pre-recording. There is no um, production on your end. It's just the clicking of the button, read speaker servers, kick it back, kick it, and then kick it back to you, and we're converting that digital content on the fly, streaming, dynamically, however you wish to describe it, that's what we're doing. I think it's pretty impressive. Also, some history on read speaker. We're, we're not new kids on the block. Um, we've been around for 12 years, experience in TTS. Our uptime, if you, if you look at Josh's um, keynote that he had, our uptime was 99.94%. So right there with him in, in 2013. Also, uh, this is a question that we always get. Because we're on so many different websites and so many different platforms, we work on all devices, all browsers, and all operating systems, as, as long as they're relatively up to date. Um, I, I did have a, a professor who was evaluating our solution that was running a very old version of um, um, AOL. And it was a version as, as a browser that, that wasn't supported and he needed to update that. So that, that was, I thought was something. Also, a little later, I, I can give you kind of a three-step process of how easy ReadSpeaker is to implement. It really is. This is something that you can have up and going in a couple hours. Also, our technology is always up to date. It's customized, it's customizable, so it can meet your uh, special needs that you're looking for. And the, also the other one I think is very important, mainly when we look at our, our, um, our integration with Canvas, you're gonna control your own linguistic library. So if something is not being pronounced accurately, you can go in and there's a spreadsheet that we provide, tweak it, push it out to us, and usually within 24 hours, um, that is then, once that page is refreshed, it will read the way that, that you expect. So if there's an issue, an example, last night I was doing a presentation, and it, the term was ready, and then the next word was, um, it should be read, and, read, and it was read as read. Um, because our, our technology kind of predicted that's the way, after following ready, that's the way that it should be pronounced, even though our company is read speaker. So that was something that I had to put in the request and have it um, modified, and then when I refresh that page, it'll be up and running that way. So when we're talking about assessments and the ability to read different things accurately, um, this is a key functionality that we offer and we think is absolutely essential when it comes to that. So we've been partners with Canvas for a little less than a year. Well, I think more than a year, um, but our solution to where it was rolled out. And these are the early stages of our early adopters. Uh, some of the ones that I've worked with, and I'm going to share some, uh, some data on, um, Galen College of Nursing, they recently launched. I, I like to really talk about them because, one, the integration went so smoothly, but also um, one of the reasons they went with ReadSpeaker, well, one, we're the only ones who integrate with Canvas, but the other reason was our ability to handle the medical terminology that they were offering. It was, techn it was um, information that was already... Um, you know, already had experience with, and at this moment, they have not had to hand in any type of spreadsheet that related to any types of pronunciations. 
that I'm aware of. So very pleased with that. Um, the other one that I do want to talk about was a pilot that I worked closely with at the University of Oklahoma. Um, they were evaluating two LMSs side by side, but also within those LMSs, Reed Speaker was a functionality that they offered. And these are a couple screenshots, but I'm, I'm going to show you some versions because it's, it's a better view. And I want to jump to my slide on Canvas um, and, and the OU pilot. So uh, if you're familiar with the OU, I work closely with the OU um, IT LMS admin. His name was Kevin Buck. Um, Kevin is the admin right now. They do run D2L, and they do also run Canvas in the pilot version. It was a pilot of about 2,000 users. All the data isn't in because the... The, um, the pilot ended in um, the end of May. So we're expecting to have more of it at the end of this month. But the early surveys that he provided, this was some of the information that they shared. 50% of all the OU um, pilot users claimed that ReadSpeaker was a tool that was very useful. Um, and some of the feedback that he shared was they were accessing ReadSpeaker not as a assistive tech tool, but more as a mobile learning tool. They were accessing their information on um, transit, um, commuting, um, doing, walking back and forth. You guys are on campuses. How many kids have headsets on and they're walking around? These are ways that students were accessing content, and this is something that I said. And then the other, you know, the other thing that uh, I was very impressed by the numbers, and I want to follow up on this, is 75% 75, 75 of all Oklahoma University users stated that ReadSpeaker was a functionality that they would probably use in the main LMS as it went live. So it's a, it's a campus, I believe, of about 14,000 FTEs. So if we're looking at that numbers and those activations, uh, we're tickled about that. And we're really excited about the rollout come, um, which is going to be August for them, um, in, in a different LMS. So with that, we do know that TTS and education is here to stay because of the massive usage, because it's easy to install and maintain. It's cost effective when you're looking to provide audio. There's no need to, um, you know, in today's day and age of Surrey, uh, the way that TTS has become um, not only accepted by today's generation because they grew up playing video games, and TTS has always been part of that. Uh, we know that there is a evidence of a daily usage and its massive usage. And it's only going to grow stronger as our integrations continue to expand and, and um, it enhance kind of that learning experience. Before we get into campus, some other ways that ReadSpeaker supports campuses. Um, we can offer more accessibility. We have a meeting a little later. We do know that Canvas is going to be going to Box as their content converting tool. Uh, which will offer a lot of your files um, into an HTML5. That's ReadSpeaker. Uh, we'll easily be able to support that. Also, we believe that some of the content, because it's going to be in an SG, SVG file, it's going to be a, a rock star graphic, um, there may be some accessibility issues behind that. Text may be lost in that image. And the one thing that ReadSpeaker wants to do with them is to pull that text forward so screen readers can support that but also to, to speech enable it with our TTS. Learning repositories. We know that a lot of campuses are working with learning repositories. We have a very impressive uh, document viewing in, in our doc reader tool, and hopefully I'll have time to show that. And what that can do is read um, PDF Word docs, PowerPoint, Excel files, um, and convert uh, that once again dynamically uh, on the fly and, and read that. Voice enabling websites, uh, Oklahoma, excuse me, Ohio State University, um, if I had to name one, that's a pretty good website that utilizes ReadSpeaker. And then the other, in the areas of training um, and also um, the way that audio is being used, we have some really simple tools that are time efficient and cost effective um, that support audio production with our API. Um, high quality audio. I was hoping to be able to announce it at one today, but it, it, it's it's going to be delayed a little bit, but um, be able to use audio to plug into the LMS. We know a lot of training programs are, are doing that. <coughs> so at this time, I'll also take some questions, but then I, I want to jump into um, our, our, our integration with Canvas. So at this time, I'd love to take some questions while I show, off, show us in Canvas.
So if we're to highlight talk about splitting in, in, in Canvas, the way the integration works, it's, it's done through the global JavaScript. So it can be turned on and turned off via that. And when it's turned on, you then have a floating toggle bar, which will allow you to click and highlight or just press play. Now in the beginning, the reason why I showed you that, how it read a lot, that it's just an example of pressing play and it will pick up pretty much, um, there's, let's say there's parameters set up in the page. So it's gonna read everything within that area to that. So it's gonna read test, it's gonna read the date, it's gonna read everything, all right? And the other aspect um, is the ability to highlight it and press play um, and go from there. So you can prioritize specifically what you want and or um, the ability to also um, to, to personalize your learning to the way that you wish. So once again, turn off, turn on, floating toggle around. I know I got this blown up pretty good. So um, announcements. We will support um, all content in there. I was doing a demo with a, with a prospective client and they just asked me to cut and paste and this is something that we put in. Um, and you can see how that is. And if there's some of the discussions. I'm gonna pause it for a second because I do wanna show some of this functionality. So you can highlight, turn it on and off if you wish. Also, you have the ability for your highlight options to be modified between words and sentences, sentence only, words only. Also, if you have some uh, visual difficulties of viewing colors, the ability can also be uh, modified and changed that way. Um, the text color can also be changed. And also, the rate, the reading rate can be modified between slow, medium, fast. I did have it on fast, um, honestly, because that was the rate that I was showing it last night in one of my presentations. And when I was playing around with it this morning, I, I didn't quite realize that it was on fast. So I usually like it on medium. Um, and then also um, the automatic scrolling. Questions? Fully, fully accessible um, with screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, there's a microphone here. I. Do you want me to repeat it? So we'll read speaker work with screen reader technology. Um, would there be a way for a student who's visually impaired to? either use the screen reader to let them know there was a button there, or you know, is there some kind of way that they would know that there's a listen button there? Read speaker is fully accessible with screen readers, um, so you can use the keystrokes um, to, uh, to do that. Also, a little history on our, our technology um, was invented and also continues the work as our CTO by our CTO, Frederick Larson, who is sighted, uh, so he, he is blind, so our technology is, he's a big, role player in creating our technology. That's the quickest five minutes I've ever seen from 10 to five. Any other question? Let me get you, hang on, hang on. Hang on, we're... Okay, can you hear me in the back? It's mainly for the recording. Is it, is it difficult to show you how it works? Yeah, you know, like for example, when um, a student log on a course or maybe go to a course, I would like to see how it sort of like you know, works out, you know, like in terms of the uh, visually impaired student. Uh, we can set something up if you want to do that. And, and the one thing that I would offer is um, if this is something you wish to evaluate, because uh, it's technology that I don't have here with me, we could set up um, connect with me and we can set up a QA environment. Um, you can turn ReadSpeaker on in your environment and you can test it out with your accessibility um, team to, to feel comfortable about that. So um, another question is that um, can the software read like a Microsoft Word document that is uploaded on Canvas? Because you said something over there um, like PDF and Microsoft Word. And also if we embed, for example, YouTube video or Quizlet in Canvas, 
can the software read that too uh, um, to inform the visually impaired students that, okay, this is a Quizlet activity, this is a YouTube, um, um, embedded YouTube videos and so on. Thank you. Great question. At this time, because um, Canvas uses script and they're doing things via an iframe, ReadSpeaker does not support that. So if something is uploaded, that's the importance of the new version that they're running with Crocodile via Box, um, which will convert everything via the global JavaScript and everything will be in HTML5. So ReadSpeaker will be able to support that. So when you are uploading your PDFs, your Word docs, Microsoft Suite solutions, we will be able to support that. Um, via your YouTube, um, probably pending on where you're pointing to. Um, it's gonna read the information that you cut and paste and plug in there, um, but if it's pushing out to the video, once again, similar to an iframe, we're not gonna be supporting the YouTube URL. I would love them as a client, but not yet. Well, and I believe you probably may be a, a more privy to that than I am, but I believe it's, it's gonna be rolled out soon. We're actually in a meeting right after this discussion to, to get more of a roadmap. I cannot answer that. I'm, we, we understand that most of the documents, PDF, these are, you know, our experience in the LMS space, it is a huge space to um, support, and that's most of what content is. Yep. So the other thing that we really didn't talk much about is also our ability to support grades. Um, quizzes and being able to read okay. things. So, another question? I was just gonna say the box is already in the beta of our beta site, so it should be rolled out. I think before September. Terrific. I think we just have to test that out with our servers. But to be honest with you, we we provided a um, a proof of concept with Box last July, looking at their API. So we feel very comfortable moving with that. Hi. I just want to make sure you were just talking about quizzes, that the student then could read what the question says, what the possible answers are. They could hear that, mark that and hear that. That is correct. Okay. And if the instructor wrote comments when we grade, they can mark that and hear that. That is correct. If it's posted in the... In the Canvas environment, it would read that, yes. Yeah, there's comment box after yep. each question. Yep. So, okay, thank you. Pretty much anything on the tabs. Um, I was going through, um, I was doing a demo with a, um, well, actually, they're, they're, they're a client now, and we were showcasing how we could even read the rubric. Um, so we were reading the rubric out loud, and so anything really in the Canvas environment, we can and will be able to support. I know we're running late on time. Is there any other questions that I could answer at this time? Yeah. How do you find out more information on the access to the speaker, or can the Sure, and, and these are these are definitely conversations that I'd love to be able to have with you. You can grab a business card and connect with me. And these are I have some time also Thursday, um, later today also. If anybody would like to have a private session or demo, we can also set up time with that centered around, like we said, offering it on your QA environment. Love to be able to have you test it out that way. There's no cost of that. Allows you to play with voices and everything um, to where you get a full evaluation of that. Yeah. And then pricing and all things, of course, those are conversations that I'd love to have, too. I believe there's one more question. I apologize. I know we're running. I was just wondering if there were limitations to the way that the conversation is done. In this, in this version, yes, it will, not, it will not read the PowerPoint unless it is cut and pasted and plugged into that. If it's an uploaded as a file, it wouldn't. However, once again, with the beta version of the... Of the um, Crocodoc, that is something that we expect to be solved. Also, to give you an idea, we didn't, and I wish I had more time, our doc reader can read PowerPoint presentations. So we have that functionality in existence today. I, I would have to, can, can it read Google Docs? I'd have to double, yes it can? 
Our, my managing partner's in the back, so if there's a question, Jo Peinroth. Um, if there's a question I don't know, that's why I was looking back there. So it can read Google Docs. And we do read Gmail and different um, areas. So yeah, I wasn't too sure about that, but that's great to hear. Yes. Is this go oh. we're, re we're recording them, yes. Any other questions? I'd like to thank everybody for their time today and the opportunity to learn a little bit more about TTS and Read Speaker. Thank you very much.